Hey everyone, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk The Expanse. We're here, we are at the season one finale, episode 10, and I frankly can't w wait to get started into this episode, but let's catch our breath and remember what's happened. And yeah, wow. So, Worlds Have Collide. Miller and the crew of the Rosinante have met in uh, Eros. They've discovered that Julie Mao is confirmed dead. There's this um, proto-molecule that infected her. She died in her hotel room waiting to hear from the, the OPA. Help never came and she died a very sad and lonely death. But the protomolecule is out there. Miller and Holden have just been dosed, uh, given a, a big dose of hard radiation, a fatal dose. In fact, we don't know exactly how long they have to live, but, but they're dead men walking at this point. And to top it off, Eros is under lockdown and they all have to get back to the Rosinante and escape because there is some sort of black ops team or something along those lines hunting them down. The police on Eros are corrupt and they're basically, the, the, the police are basically the bad guys right now. And yeah, what we learned last episode, primarily Christian learned this, is that the, the, the mystery stealth ships that destroyed the camp, that destroyed the Donager, were in fact built on Earth. And maybe they were built by and or for Julie Mao's father's company? That's a possibility. We don't know that for sure yet, but it does seem like the bad guy is some Earth entity. Not Probably not the UN, based on the UN not knowing anything about these ships and wanting to find out where they're from. But, but an Earth Corporation makes a lot of sense being the bad guy in this show. Um, we know Julie Mao's father was in frequent touch with this scientist named Dresden, who seemed to be um, spearheading the proto-molecule project, and they're trying to recover the protomolecule and tie up loose ends, which includes, of course, Miller, Holden, the rest of the Rosinante crew. What's going to happen in this episode? Not a freaking clue. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to... I don't think we're going to tie things up, per se. You know, the... A lot of it depends on whether a show knows whether it's coming back for another year or whether it thinks it might be done at the end of season one. How much of the story do you tie up? How many loose ends and cliffhangers do you leave available for the writers to latch onto at the start of next season? But I feel like there's so much of this world that we still need to explore. So many rich characters, such an interesting plot that there's no way to do a one episode wrap up justice. So I hope that this is just sort of a big new reveal this episode that takes the story in a bold new direction and what season two may entail, I have no idea, but I'm psyched to find out. Anyway, let's jump right into it, guys. This is the season finale, episode 10, and it's called Leviathan Wakes. The Miller's friends, that's a stretch. Where the hell is he? No clue. He's got his own agenda. This emergency is bullshit. Yes. We're getting off this rock. All ships are locked down. Yeah, well, the Rossi ain't all ships. Help us get into the old mech shafts. They'll lead us to the docks. But I've been a copy for years. I can't even find my way through that maze. Which is why the OPA uses them as smuggling routes. <laughs> on every station. She basically just admitted to the fact that she's OPA. Take us with you, please. Oh. Random. We won't be any trouble. How many, how many passengers are they going to take? Stims, anti-nausea, we're going to need it. It'll give us time. Uh, uh, I'd say we cured then. <laughs> no. We'll be sharp when we melt from the inside out. Okay, so we're talking a quick death here. 
How long you figure we got? A couple hours, maybe. <sighs> Radiation meds on that ship of yours? I hope so. Okay, so they can cure it if they get to the Rosinante. Half that time till our ride leaves. So we basically have a real-time episode here, I think. Yeah, look. His graffiti's up. <laughs> she touched the unknown. And it touched her in return. She's gonna save us all. Okay. What is the proto-molecule... What's it supposed to do? Oh, man. It's acting fast. <clears throat> Jesus. Half the system thinks you're some kind of outlier hero, but you're really kind of clueless, aren't you? <laughs> well, thank God I got you here. Okay. Arcade. A little pachinko, perhaps. Please don't stop here. Yep. Yeah. More mercenaries. She ain't gonna leave you here, is she? You don't only know me, Nagata. <laughs> Your optimism is inspire optimism. You're assholes. <laughs> Earthers. <laughs> Belters? You know what's up. You know the game's rigged. He says it in a gambling hall. And naturally you evolved into cops. Now that was Sammy's idea. He said you want to be an ass, you want to be a boot. <laughs> which one are you now? Back to being an ass, I think. Yeah. Oh, are we going to get some fun hallucinations? Which one are you now? Oh. Sorry, kid. What are they doing? Come on, get down! Get down! Someone's coming! Get down! <laughs> this is hilarious. Very much the odd couple. Yeah! a girl! Hold and then pull the trigger. <laughs> They're getting more are gonna come in, right? Everyone's a winner on Eros. <laughs> Our people have been tracking those exact fusion drives for some time now. For how long? Several weeks. I just reviewed the entire report myself. This guy's in on it. This guy's totally in on it, and Christian's beginning to suspect it. There you are. Right on time, as usual. Yeah. Hey, bro. Christian Avasarala, I trust you remember Jules Pierre Mao. Jules Pierre? Again, Pierre Chang Mao? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're definitely his Mao's ships. Make sure your kid keeps up. She's not my kid. Take care of her. She's your kid now. Look, if you ain't over your head, you better say so now. Shut up. Naomi's man. not over her head. We know enough about her already to know that. Emergency system. Stop. Hmm. Well, everything must be okay then. <laughs> oh, geez. Why is it hitting Miller so much more than Holden? Cameras, transmitters, monitors. What the hell is all this? Are they staging an OPA attack? Pods are online. What are what are they doing? Are they Oh god. Oh my god. Oh they they they're all they all have the proto molecule. They're spreading it deliberately. It's an experiment. Oh god damn station. It's just just an experiment. Oh jeez. Live human studies. Oh, are we just... What are we doing to her now? Oh. What? What's it doing? What's it doing to the protomolecule? Is it just waking it up or what? We're going the right way. I've learned that that spiraling happens the closer you are to the center of oh gross ah! stay back don't touch anything i love those little details because the the rock is spinning that like eros is spinning to generate its own gravity right because it's not big enough just as a mass to generate that much gravity but if you spin it up then you can create 
centrifugal force or centripetal force. I always get those two confused. Where are you? But that means the closer you are to the the axis of spin, the weirder gravity acts. She was sick. She'd be alright. Wouldn't bet on it, kid. But we will be if we go, but we have to go now. Is she infected? I'd be worried about this kid and the other guy. Power money. Is it power? We got company. That's why they picked arrows. I don't I mean, consider these people human. Mars will accuse Earth of using a bioweapon. Earth will claim it's Mars. It's a good way to start a war and to cover it up. Does it look like any bioweapon you ever heard of? We got company. Hey. <laughs> okay. Ah, suiting up. Yeah. Sizing each other up. What is Holden C and Miller exactly? I think it's it's more complicated than just you know an asshole who who doesn't care and charges in half cocked. Oh, okay. Her uncle is a doctor there. Whatever it is, it's not a sickness. It's something else. We can get you off this station. This is our home. Look, there's no, no safe place here. Her place is with her family. Please! You'll die if you... Yeah. People have spent their entire life on a rock in the middle of space. Miller's first time off series. You know, those people have never left Eros, even when everything's telling them they shouldn't stay. Okay, it's starting to hit. Hey, oh, it's, it's me. Oh, we do not trust you, dogs. Kenzo. I that way myself. Come on, I almost got blasted getting out of that lobby too. Yeah, don't trust him. I'm at saying all. something about help. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm putting my life in your hands. You are a good man. Tell me why I'm a good man. Holden's gonna kill someone before this episode's up. Because you know that sometimes a man is pushed so far that he does things that he doesn't recognize. You've seen what's happening. This is a death sentence. Yeah. Hold in. <laughs> okay. I love all the stuff that's going unsaid between Holden and Miller. So much of it's open to interpretation. Does this look like the right way to you? But they're both trying to puzzle each other out. This was the way. It's, there's a way through. This is it. This is it. Oh, geez. That, that's a big ladder. Do you realize our son would now be older than you were when we first met? But he'd probably be twice as handsome. Thanks to you. Oh, he's smooth. Frank knew those drives were stolen. He didn't commit suicide. And you're not safe here either. I will be for a time. So long as I play a familiar role. So she thinks Frank was murdered, that he didn't commit suicide. That shot of them on the roof it was clocked really interestingly to make us question our perspective. Almost like it was zero grav or low grav. Where's the scruffy guy? He's gone. I think he might have been infected. We're better off. What did you do? Did he kill him? We're better off. Your rendezvous point has changed. The men now leave from dock four birth after. That's the other side of the dock. Oh, all the mercs are gonna are sacrificed too. Possible anxiety, skin rash, <laughs> sudden death. Not yet. How much time are they? All tucked in below. Gonna give them. Point me to a console so I can override the clamps. We're not leaving yet. What? He still has time. He didn't make it. End of story. We're waiting. He's right. Mm -hmm. We owe Holden. I don't need to do a goddamn thing. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Shooting me is not gonna get you. Pulling a gun on a on her just flipped Amos. Unlock the clamps. 
You stand by to drive us out of here. Alex, you don't do it. Amos, fire up those consoles. Hey, Amos is just going along. I'll shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Amos was flipped the moment. Wait till we wait, boss. Yeah, the moment he pulled the gun on Naomi. I'm just gonna put this below. <laughs> I'm coming around on Amos. <laughs> you already moved most of your people, yeah? You got some room for us? We're right there. These Arthurs ain't gonna let us out, man. No. They ain't never gonna let us out. We just make for the machine. <laughs> it's just riling them up. Oh, they they... Damn well not leading us. The blood's on the wall, but right now we're gonna rise up. Jesus, do we recognize the bald guy? Was he the one that skewered Miller's partner? Yeah, this guy. We recognize him. Holden now got that guy, didn't he? Good night. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He had it coming. Miller recognized him. <laughs> Holy shit. What does rain taste like? I never thought about it. <laughs> Did you ever leave a place like Earth? Everything I loved was dying. Presumably they're still there? Anybody down there? Well, we made it. <laughs> you gonna make us wait a bit for before opening up? Here we go. <laughs> He's having his visions. You guys look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, pump these guys full of anti rad medication. Rad X, rad away. The whole dose. Purified water. Give them all of it. You're pretty messed up. The machine keeps trying to switch to hospice. <laughs> Hospice, so that's just like palliative. They might be infected with that crap. Holden wouldn't do that to us. He might not know. He wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> I like her faith in Holden. It's a fair it's a fair question from Alex. Like you can't you can't fault Alex for wondering. I knew I was right about you. Being in charge is a shit job. <laughs> she didn't want you it. You can have it. <laughs> Tried every code in the book. Alex, deal with it. Here comes Kenzo. Is Kenzo gonna offer it up? Because they they killed the local dude. You are a gunship, and I am a navy pilot. So <laughs> shoot our way out. Oh, I love I love the the design of this. The hell is this gas hot bullshit? Oh, dump the uh, external, the camouflage. Oh. This is such a badass Pretty ship. Clear. I love it. And we're out. Dang. Oh, what else has come? Other ships are leaving, or at least one other. Yeah. Is that Dresden on that other ship, presumably? No contagion. Awesome. We saved a few. We should have saved more. We will. These two have good chemistry. There's something going to happen there? I was half wondering whether this guy had snuck his way back on or not. Oh man, it's everywhere. I wouldn't stand that close to all the buzzing blue dust. Oh shit, what? What? It replicated him? 
Okay, it's intelligent. Whoa! Whoa! What the? Okay. Holy crap! So whatever happened to Kenzo right there at the end, that's his name, right? Was the same thing that we saw Julie Mao witness in the opening sequence of the pilot when she when she stuck her head into the engine room. So this is more than just a microorganism. This is something else, but it has, it's intelligent enough to replicate uh, the appearance of somebody else, of another species. It's physical enough to have these big grabby arms that feed itself. It's a, some sort of hive organism almost, but clearly there's a whole lot more to be learned about it, but perhaps, the name of this thing ought to be Leviathan, a massive creature from the deep. So we got a, we got the people that matter off Eros. Naomi waited. I like what's going on between Naomi and Holden, and I'm and, and I mean that much more than just if if there happens to be any sort of romantic chemistry, which I think there may be, but there's also a lot more to it as far as professional respect and friendship, and there there's a there's a really complicated dynamic relationship there that I hope gets explored more. And we also got co confirmation this episode, I would say, that she, that Naomi is in fact OPA. And it was certainly hinted at plenty leading up to now. The Martians had their suspicions yeah, now it all seems confirmed. She she was the only one that knew her way through the mech tunnels by reading the the OPA signal um, like signs that sort of thing. So I think we can assume Naomi a OPA Holden ex Earther who never wants to go back was told to flee Earth. In fact, by his mother, we've got Alex who is ex Martian Navy and. Uh, finally living up to his potential as a pilot. And we have Amos, who's a belter that um, will blindly follow Naomi anywhere. And there's some interesting history there. It was very interesting seeing what happened with Amos in that scene with, I, 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 I can't remember his name, but Miller's Eros cop friend who was tagging along, the one that was demanding Naomi take off immediately Amos agreed with him that they should leave immediately that they shouldn't wait for Holden but the moment that dude pulled a gun on Naomi you could see it you recognized it on Amos's face he, he's like oh no this this guy has to die now no one pulls a gun on Naomi and uh, yeah you, you just knew it was coming even when it appeared that he was he was going along with the with the cop We've rescued some, some people from, from Eros. I hope we're checking them all for potential contagion because if that stuff gets on board the Rosinante, they're all hooped, but maybe they're safe. But it certainly complicates their mission from here on out. Miller and Holden actually had like a, a ticking time bomb of sorts this episode and they got back just in time. Miller got an iota of retribution. He killed the guy that attacked um, Havelock back in episode five, four, five, six. Yeah, five, I want to say. I'm probably wrong. And Christian, back on Earth, who's almost living like this parallel story that I, I, I genuinely wonder whether it'll ever like physically intersect with Holden and Miller and the Rosinante and out in space, but she's, I think, realizing that her immediate boss, the Undersecretary of the UN, might be dirty, might be working with Jules Pierre now, and that they're trying to, to mislead her and steer her towards Fred Johnson and the OPA. 
and she's playing along for now but you can tell that she she realizes something's up she also thinks frank the uh the earth ambassador to mars that it wasn't suicide as it appeared so yeah he was killed to cover up what he knew what information he could share but it feels like Mao's company which I don't know the name for I don't think unless he's like you know if I went back to the pilot I'm sure it would be mentioned we just know that he's he's a rich earther but is he like the CEO of Star Helix or something along those lines I don't know I think we can assume he's certainly responsible for the proto molecule it would make sense that he's also responsible for these stealth ships that took out the Cant and the Donager. And they've still got this loose end in the form of Holden and the Rossinanti crew. But what is the proto molecule? What was it designed for? What does what is it actually doing now? Is is it are those two things the same? Is it doing what it was supposed to? Or is this a runaway experiment that's gone sideways but it hasn't gone so sideways that dresden can't use eros as a living laboratory where they they're willing to sacrifice a hundred thousand people living on this this asteroid to find out more about what this proto molecule is doing i half expected kenzo to become a a part of the Rossinante, maybe not a trustworthy part, but I thought that he may somehow end up on board, but that's clearly not the case. He's he's a dead man. He got fed to the Leviathan, or whatever we're, we're going to end up calling that. And yeah, the Rossinante is aware of Dresden's ship. Not sure if the Dre if Dresden's ship is aware of the Rossinante right now, but but if we can confirm that Dresden's ship is of the same stealth technology that the ships that took out the Cant and the Donager, then I think we can confirm everything we need to know about who the bad guys are and how many bad guys they are and and all of that. Whew, season two is going to be interesting, guys. I feel like this was just our first act. This is just sort of establishing the playing field, setting the chess table. Here's our here's here's all our players. Here's here's who matters in this in this story, and now things get interesting. So I'm I'm really psyched to jump into season two next week, guys. I think it's gonna be an amazing ride. I'm loving what the show's doing so far. Visually, it's stunning. The filmmaking is excellent. The the, the performances are understated but really powerful and uh, the writing is uh, it's impeccable there's there's nothing wrong with it so far i don't feel like there's been any um one of the things i really appreciate about this show is there's there haven't been any tangents yet this the whole story is the story and yes we're approaching the story from multiple angles we you know from miller from holden from chris jen but it's all the same story. We're just seeing the same story from different perspectives. And um, there's no fluff. There's no extraneous um, side plots that don't, that aren't essential to the central storyline, which keeps the energy up, keeps the, the pace urgent and focused. And I think for a show like this, that was, that that's, really important there's no such thing as a standalone episode in this show i think i think this is all about the plot and i can't wait to see where the plot goes next next season so thank you guys so much for spending a little bit of time with me here today on neil talks love to read your comments don't forget to like and subscribe and until next week everybody take care stay healthy see you soon cheers <laughs>